Welcome back, I'm Peter Millard and in the 10 minute workshop this week I'm talking you through a recent big wardrobe install that's coming up next. So yes, big wardrobe build. Um, you've seen a little bit about this perhaps in previous videos uh, but I had uh, under a lot of time pressure on this as I am with a lot of installs these days and I just don't have time to shoot much in the way of video. But I do have some still pictures for this and a little bit of video, so I just thought I'd talk you through the process of the job, because there's a few bits and pieces in there which uh, may be of interest to you. So we start where we finished off last time with a plinth dry fitted in the workshop. Once I know, once I knew that was all good, I could break it down into the two more manageable pieces. The workshop was so full at this time, I actually had to store the plinth up in the ceiling, lashed up tight to the uh, to the lights, as everywhere else was filled with finished wardrobe parts. Because after the, all the waxing and oiling was complete, I then had to spend a happy few hours wrapping up these individual wardrobe components. And there are almost 50 individual pieces in these wardrobes, not including the pre-sprayed doors and infills already on site. And after a happy Sunday afternoon spent with a lot of dust sheets and masking tape, it was finally all ready to go. And I mentioned that it, this was all done on a Sunday afternoon with a few hours, because you've got to accommodate this. You've got to allow for the costing of this, because if you don't, then you're either working for free or that time is being taken away from what you're earning on the rest of the job. Anyway, it was all finally ready to go and all I had to do then was sort out my own gear for the install, which is a pretty well-established process that I've covered in previous videos. If you, if you want to know the details of how I do that, then go and take a look at those individual vids. So Monday morning, bright and early, we get the vans loaded. I've got help from my usual delivery driver to get everything up to North London. I don't actually have a key to the house at this time as the family are all away uh, on holiday so we have to time our arrival within a one hour time slot while the cleaner is there. The cleaner will let me in and I can pick up an envelope with keys and alarm codes and all that stuff in that have been left for me. It all worked out fine uh, but all the stuff that was uh, in the vans was going up to the third floor of the house and it took over an hour to get all this stuff in. Naturally, the family have had the whole house decorated uh, recently as well, so you've got to be extremely careful going all the way up three flights of stairs with everything uh, carried between the two of us. I then took another half an hour, 40 minutes just to get all my gear in as well. Thankfully though, the room had been cleared and this was actually the first time that I'd seen the space empty and surprise, as well as redecorating the room, uh, the clients have had shutters fitted to the windows. Now, I'd allowed the carcasses to come inboard from the walls slightly to clear the windowsill on the left hand side, but the shutters stand slightly proud of this so the first thing I do is assemble the plinth and get it roughly leveled. I know from a previous visit that the floor falls away to the right hand side by about 20 mil and I've accommodated that in the dimensions. And then I can lay out the bases of the carcasses onto the plinth just like I did back here in the workshop to get a visual check of how they look in the space. And just to be safe I ease the plinth and carcasses a little to the right, just to give a little bit more clearance. It's only about 12 or 15 mil, but this will mean that the infills now are slightly uneven. They'll be wider on the left-hand side than on the right-hand side, but there's not much I can do about that, and I would rather have that than have the doors clash against the window shutters every time they're opened. Now, once leveled, I can fix the plinth to the skirting boards at the rear and at the front with small wooden legs screwed to the inside of the plinth and bearing either against the floor directly or against small squares of MDF or plywood that I screw down through the bedroom carpet directly into the floor. This really compresses the carpet down and makes for a much more stable footing for the legs to bear against. I know some guys like to cut the carpet away and let the feet go directly through to the floorboards, but I try and avoid damaging customers' property too much, even if it's gonna be under a wardrobe. These little legs can then be fixed to the scrap board with brackets if you need to. With the plinth fixed, I can attach the pre-painted toe board. This is just a six mil MRMDF strip scribed to the floor and glued in place. This is much, much easier to do before you get the carcasses in, by the way. 
And next up, I need to crack on with making the carcasses, and this was made very easy, much easier with the Lamello Tenso and Clamex connectors. This was the first time I'd used them on a job, and yes, I made all those first time user mistakes, putting Clamex connectors in the wrong way around so you can't get the hex key in, and mixing up the Tenso and Clamex female components, which aren't compatible at all. Despite that, it was a quick and straightforward assembly with a deep left hand carcass going in first, followed by the tricky right hand shaped carcass and then the more straightforward center carcass. These are big pieces by the way, over a hundred kilos each for the end units, for the end wardrobe, so they needed handling with a little bit of respect, a little bit of care. And once in position the center wardrobe is fixed to the wall with low brackets set into grooves routed into the wardrobe top. I've shown this process before on other wardrobe builds and it still works really well. Next I have to get the top boxes lifted in and over the years of working alone I've developed a technique for getting these into position. Now it's obviously much better if you can arrange some help but that isn't always possible and the help isn't always available so the next best thing I found is to do the lifting in two stages. I have two platforms set up, one slightly lower than the other and I've lifted the centre top box onto the slightly taller one closest to the wardrobes. I'm protecting the front edge of the wardrobe with the dust sheet then carefully making the next stage of the lift to just high enough to get the back edge of the top box onto the carcass so that the carcass bears the weight. Then it's a relatively simple matter to lever it up onto the top of the wardrobe, carefully taking away the dust sheet when I have it steady and balanced. After it's centred, I drill through the base of the top box and screw the top box and wardrobe together, which not only secures them, but also helps to stop any sagging over this kind of span. And with the centre top box fixed, I can shuffle the surrounding boxes into position and fix them to their wardrobe carcasses in the same way. Back in the centre top box I'm drilling a pilot hole and then screwing the boxes together at either side, positioning the screws carefully so the hinge plates will hide any fixings. And I do the same with the wardrobe carcasses lower down, screwing them together at each hinge position. Now with everything screwed together I want to be able to fix the whole assembly to the walls at either side and I'm using space plugs to do this. This is the first time I'd used them as I said in the previous video and they work extremely well but because I've moved the carcasses over a little bit to accommodate the shutters the longest screws I had with me were going to be a little bit shorter than I'd like so I glued blocks of scrap wood to the wall with fast setting PU adhesive and fixed into those and worked extremely well. Uh, it's the same story on the right hand side as well except the gap is now narrower so I had to cut 12 or 15 mil off the space plugs as I only had the larger size with me. Again these screws will be hidden behind the hinge plates when they're fitted. And the last thing I do is screw the carcasses down onto the plinth with a couple of tongue tight or loss tight screws. These have a particularly small head which I can easily conceal. So with the carcasses all locked in place I can start scribing the infills or fillets above the wardrobes and around the sides. These infills have been sprayed to match the doors and I only have one of each. So I take this very slowly and steady starting with the scribe to the ceiling and around the decorative plaster cornice. I fitted an MDF batten above the top boxes and set back from the front edge by the thickness of the infill and then added little plywood uprights just shy of the ceiling for the infill to bear against and to glue onto. Uh, because of the complexity of the plaster work I first template the shape in corrugated plastic or corex and then transfer that onto a full length piece of MDF and use that to template to the ceiling again with little strips of corex. Then I can scribe the one expensively sprayed infill that I have, no pressure, uh, before doing the same thing to the right hand side. Now all this took much longer than I would have liked and I ended up with quite a lot to do on the last day. First starting with scribing the side infills and again a shout out to uh, the guys at Uscribe and the Block Scribe Jigs for uh, making this a much easier process. I will have a scribing video out soon so keep an eye out for that. And with the side infills completed and a little caulking done I can bring in the shelves first fitting out the narrow right hand side wardrobe recess and then the full width shelves in the left hand wardrobe and the top box shelves and then fitting the hanging rails cutting them to size 
and fitting all the brackets. And finally, it's onto the doors. You might remember that I made these before the wardrobes as they had to be sent out for spraying, and this is literally the first time that they've been offered up. Uh, so starting at the centre top, I hang the first pair of the dozen doors that I have to fit, and then I work my way around until they're all complete. And with a grid of doors like this, the shut lines need to be very tight and very consistent. And the concealed or Euro style hinges make this almost a pleasure to do. Watch out for a concealed hinge video out soon. And that was basically that for this job. Uh, with the doors hung, all that was really left to do was for me to clear up and get out of there. What I usually do with these sort of jobs is that once I know that the client's happy, the clients were still on holiday when I completed this, but they're now back and they are delighted with it, I'm happy to say. Uh, I arranged to revisit in about six or eight weeks' time just to check that the doors haven't settled on their hinges. This rarely happens, to be honest. But it's a good opportunity to reconnect with the clients and perhaps discuss any future projects they have in mind. Uh, but also maybe take some pictures when you're not exhausted exhausted, dusty and covered in glue, or perhaps when the light may be better. Of course, as a trained professional, you'll have checked during the install what time of day the room was at its best and made an, a note of that time so that you know what time to arrange that visit. If you're interested in what a job like this costs to put together, well, you might want to join the Patreon party, as there's a Patreon exclusive about costings on this job. And there's usually an exclusive video most weeks that's a little bit more behind the scenes or over the shoulder type of thing. And I want to say thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters for all their ongoing support. Uh, you guys really do help to keep the lights on here. Don't forget there are links down in the video description to all the products shown in this video, as well as many other ways of supporting the channel. But that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.